So last week I made a video about the possible blurring of the line between porn and movies. And today I'm going to take a look at the possible erosion of another line, the one between movies and television. Some have been calling this line into question for a few years now, as the quality of cable television has increased exponentially, while at the same time the quality of movies seems to have decreased exponentially. Yet the two have remained very different animals, with both sides attributing the rise of quality in television to the fact the medium has 13 plus hours to tell a story and explore its characters, while movies have three, three and a half tops. FYI, I'm comparing a single film to a single season. But now one of the few bright spots in movies is complicating matters. Comic book cinematic universes have become extremely lucrative for Hollywood and are thus expanding rapidly. So rapidly, in fact, it appears the big screen can no longer contain them. At the head of the pack is Marvel Studios, which now releases two movies a year, just debuted the animated series Avengers Assemble, and this fall will debut the live-action network television show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Anchoring the show is Agent Coulson, the hugely popular character from the movies, who was killed in the Avengers, only to be resurrected on the small screen. Is this heaven, hell, or limbo? Ratings will determine whether it's heaven or hell, and as for limbo, well, we'll have to wait and see if audiences will accept Coulson as a character who exists in both movies and television, or if Marvel is even willing to take the risk to find out. Already, fanboys are hotly debating whether or not a character's appearance on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. bars them from appearing in the films, or increases their odds. My guess is the former, as Whedon has hired strictly TV actors for the show, whereas Cable usually brings in movie actors in need of a career jumpstart or recharge. Not to mention, if studios and audiences have been slow to accept Mad Men's John Hamm as a movie star, or Breaking Bad's Brian Cranston, what hope does Migna Wen have? And over at DC, they've actually found more success on the small screen, first with Smallville and now Arrow. In fact, a number of fans feel Stephen Amell's Oliver Queen should get a spot in the Justice League movie. And the CW also announced that their teen Wonder Woman prequel series, Amazon, wasn't dead, but is still being developed. That's pretty shocking news, considering how poorly David E. Kelly's NBC pilot was received, and that the third member of DC's Trinity would continue to be stuck solely on television as her male counterparts enjoy their third big screen reboots. Can audiences accept a franchise that spans both film and television, even though up until this point actors have had to choose? Sure, fanboys are loudly in favor of it, but is the mainstream moviegoer who voices his or her opinion not on the internet, but at the box office? Looks like Marvel will be the first to find out. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.